Welcome back, guys, to Trails Through Daybreak, where last episode on finishing off the Old Town Sweep, we found ourselves a 4SPG to undertake a return home, helping our client escape the Edith lockdown to be with a dying family member. We then swept through the Blacklight District and then arrived at Riverside, exchanging info with Bamotti, Jack, and Hal as our Chapter 5 talks continue. I guess we let people into the bar after our chat. <laughs> Well, Shaq and Hell are here to help us out. Let's get chatting. I can't believe Mia would escape all on her own. I didn't see that one coming. Superheroes are so darn cool. I mean, I couldn't let the story be all bleak. It needed a little hope. Is it that bad? Maybe people don't want to read about a happy and hopeful story with the way things are now. What are you talking about, Miss Kokona? We're still talking about comics, yeah? Now's the perfect time for kids to be getting some hope through these comics. Um... You're right. I'll keep writing it just the way I want it to be. Are you talking about the game? And here I thought you were too dense to understand people at all, Cronin. Where did that come from? Did I say something weird? Huh. You might be a little dense still, but I guess that's what makes you, you. <sighs> What's Marielle going to be up to? Wouldn't surprise me if Marielle just goes straight for the scoop into danger's sweet embrace. I can't speak to Bermotti. Is there a way to just go for sideways? <laughs> what angle do I need to come out here? Here? I'll hit the pavement and see what I can find out too. I owe Dingo that much. Do try to keep an eye on Marielle too if you can. I worry about what she might be up to after everything that happened. Okay. I'll take your order. Aww, you're leaving already? So how do I speak to these two? <laughs> there we go. Got a bottle here. I promised Dingo I'd open up next time he visited Longport. Anyway, I've got some contacts here in Edith. I'll see what I can dig up outside of Bermotti's network. I know it's easier said than done, but try to hold out a little longer before going on the offensive. No matter how tough the going gets, now's not the time to skulk about. I have my own history with A. Even if it's not under the same leadership anymore, that doesn't mean I can't just let them do as they please. Always an enemy. This isn't good. I might not even be able to book you another show unless you get on stage with Sailor. You know what this means, right? I hear you, and I appreciate your candor as my producer, but could I have just a little more time? Sailor won't accept if I just spring it on her out of nowhere. Give me some time to ease her into the idea. She, she's just as soft as she is, but fine. If how things are, maybe time is what she needs to gain some perspective. Alrighty. She will. Sailor and I have been talking, so all I've got to do is lay it out and... Whatever. Just take care of it. Just keep in mind we have our own bottom line to look out for. Most we can stall is two weeks. Uh, okay, thank you so much. I don't realize we're on lockdown. The city's on lockdown right now, right? The bonkers thing about that is just knowing that... It's not going to do anything. <laughs> now then. Amata can teleport. Ouroboros can teleport. <laughs> Everyone who needs to has stealth or can teleport or get a way in. Those blockades ain't doing nothing. <sighs> They're sure making a big deal out of nothing. People only ever care about those at the top anyway. And if not that, themselves. What a bunch of shit. Well. We just know that... Uh, Probably. I, in Edith? Not in Edith. Most likely not in Edith. But there's probably about to be a battle royale taking place. Because now that that bomb's been dropped and all, the gloves have to come off. I don't expect Aura Boros, if they don't like what Armata's doing, to just hang around. I don't expect the church to hang around. The braces mill still was doing things legally and brazenly, but still. The instructions of the presidential office and Everyone's taking a break right now, so I've just been cooped up in here. Man, I could go out for a drive right now. Ah, oh, I guess it's just life for you. All I could do is busy myself around the shop and save up my mirror. Wait, isn't this guy, like, super famous or something? What the heck is he doing here? God damn, I need to find something for him to sign. ASAP! Who? Me. Oh, Maxime! <laughs> Nice seeing you around here, champ. Wait, if you're here, then... Indeed, I'm here to see Bradley, the famed mechanic from back in the heyday of early Z1 racing. 
I was part of the Red Star team back then. We got our hands handed, or our behinds handed to us plenty of times by Ingus. I still keep in touch with Bradley. It's nice to kick back and talk shop with him. We'll just come asking for advice. That's mighty flattering coming from the proud consecutive Z1 champion. From where I stand, you look like you're doing just fine without my advice. Something shake up the old narcissistic worldview lately? Well, uh, I just want the people in my life to be able to trust me. I can't let pride be my downfall. As a top class racer and top class man, I want to make a sincere effort to earn that respect. Well now, you've changed kid for the better. It's up to you to prove whether it's all lip service or not, but if there's anything I can do to help, you know where to find me. Thank you, Bradley. First, I'd like to discuss the start of the next racing circuit. Eh, dude's more genuine than I gave him credit for. It's real sweet seeing him like that. He looks like he'll really do what's best for Paulette and Yume. Yeah, but he feels real guilty about it. Seeing him try to make up for it kind of makes me want to cheer for him. Okay. I guess you know now, then. Being a top-class mechanic's harder than it looks. It requires mental fortitude on top of technical know-how. Well, I guess I could lend a hand if she asks for it. It's not like I'll just ignore her if she asks for advice. I'm a trainer, after all. Uh, what'll it be? Come again. I wonder if the girls are worried about the incident in Cray Village. It certainly is concerning. But at least Victor is with them, so that's good. I'll do all I can to support them, too. I'll just need to update my machine tuning policy and dynamic reflex training. You get on that, sir. Alright, the church next. I wasn't anywhere in your way. Whining drivers. Figured they own the road. They said a lot of people died on the news. Everyone from the Central East that lived there, even Lashkar's family. Why, Rooney? Why did they all die? Earl, I... I don't... I don't know, and I can't do anything other than listen to her and let her grieve. Why did Lashkar's family have to die? His mum and dad and sister, it's just too awful. It's like I can feel how sad Earl is just by how she's holding my hand. I don't think I ever wanted to let go of her. I'm also really scared, and I know I can't do anything, but I want to at least be here for her. Good boy, Rooney. Yeesh. This can't be happening. The village, everyone, Felicia, Annie, all of them, gone. Nashka, oh thank goodness you're alright. You've been here all along. Guess you dodged a pretty hefty bullet there. Oh, it's you guys, yes. Lashkar and Kana both were in Edith at the time, but Belisha and everyone else, we don't know if they made it. Uh, my apologies, I must keep it together. I need to be there for Lashkar. I owe that much to everyone that was lost. I might have gone too far. We'll do something about all of this. You and Father Mansa take care of him in the meantime. If you need anything, feel free to get in touch, and I really do mean anything. Thank you, Van. I'll keep that in mind. And now all I can do is pray the souls lost in Cray can find peace. And look after Lashkar, of course. May Arusha light your path. We should probably leave him alone. I'm sure Sister Belisha would hate to see him this way too. I'll do everything in my power to help him in her memory. Wings Goddess, please light our paths and protect us so that such tragedy may never befall us again. Please protect this child from falling victim to such unspeakable evil. And may you lead those lost in Cray to everlasting peace and tranquility. Why is everyone so scared? Is something going on? What's a steak of emergency? Is it tasty? <laughs> Mummy is really scared too. Is there anything I can do? Oh, Harusha, please shepherd the poor, innocent souls of those lost in Cray. May your radiance guide them to paradise and your wings envelop them in warmth everlasting. May you be a refuge to those who remain in this world and protect them as they continue to walk through life. Everyone is beside themselves grieving over the tragedy in Cray. Our temple is feeling the waves quite strongly, having a particularly strong connection with the village. We should all dedicate some time to pray for the eternal rest of those lost souls. Goddess of 
Well, that's the uh, Riverside District done. Three districts complete on the sweep already. One quest. Where to next? I guess we touched up Station Street a little bit, so maybe we should head there next. But I always want to kind of avoid the ones with the red markers on them until last. Should I go to the Sidon District? See about a quest yet? We'll go through Tyrell first. Movie, maybe? Heading to the objective. There's also a little bit of, of course, we've got our extra stuff to do here. Will I get another one for doing quests? <laughs> if so, I can hit both, right? We'll see. But, uh, there's the whole, do I go with Judith and build her up more? Or do I go with Herbie's when I probably don't have another chance to go with Herbie's? And we seem to always go with side characters over anyone else. I don't know if there'll be opportunity to build up Judith further. Let's put it that way. We're getting later into the game. That said, probably if I don't do Hermes now, there'll be no chance. Not sure. Well, I guess I'll do Hermes. <laughs> this morning was pretty busy, so I just grabbed whatever to eat. I don't have much of an appetite, but I guess I'll have Hermes deliver something for me. Man's group decided to take a short break. Everyone split up so they could spend their free time as they pleased. Looks like it's raining out. Bit of a shame for this time of year. Wonder if the goddess is crying somewhere out there too. Eh, yeah, what am I doing? Getting all sappy. I should just get up and grab a bite. I was so busy this morning, I didn't even have time for breakfast. Don't want to keep everyone else waiting, though. Better make it something light and quick. Here's your delivery. Thanks, I appreciate you being so quick. I mention it. I get my customers what they need ASAP, rain or shine. Why order food, though? Could have just gone downstairs and eaten with everyone else. But anyway, it's just you right now. Yeah, I just got back a little bit ago. Gotcha. Can we talk outside once you're done eating? Only if you feel like it, of course. No pressure. I know it's raining and all, but we can work around that. Well, this is a surprise. Wasn't expecting you of all people to ask me out today. Come in and have a seat on the couch. I'll get you a drink. I'll be done with the food real quick. Traffic's lighter than usual, though I guess the roads aren't usually busy this time of day. True, but I imagine a lot of people are staying indoors due to the emergency declaration. Also, I doubt many are in the mood to go out and have fun right now. Listen, thanks for thinking about me, Hermes. But I'm fine, really. Are you trying to convince me or yourself? I'm upset about what happened to Cray too. The people there were always good to me whenever I dropped by for work. Yeah, they welcomed everyone who showed up to their doorstep, even if you were an outsider or a Jaeger. Their kindness and hospitality touched Agnes, Ferry, and I when we went there a couple of months back. I hear he stopped by there a lot, too. You're talking about your reporter friend, right? I've worked with him many times over the years. He was a good man. The world's a poorer place without him. We should never take today for granted, because no one's guaranteed a tomorrow. He and I both understood that, and yet... And yet you're preparing to fight the people who took him from us. You're going to stop the Mafia from stealing the futures of countless others like him. That's the decision you made as Van Arkride, isn't it? I'm not going to ask why you came to that decision, because I already know the answer. You're not the kind of person who runs from adversity. You tackle it head on. I thought I'd hear something like that from you, of all people. But you've got me all figured out, huh? We've known each other for a long time now. I'd like to think I've got your number at this point. Eh, I guess I'm slipping then. I'll have to do a better job keeping up the mask. Can't have my assistants worrying about me. I know there are sides of yourself you don't want your assistants to see. But remember this, Arkwright. You aren't the only one who wants to help others. There are people in your life who want to extend a hand to you, too. Got it.
The rain's finally letting up. It should be a smooth ride from here. Ah, oh, you're heading out of the city. Yeah, I've got an urgent delivery to make, so I'm going to get it done now. Hey, Dan. I doubt it'll be easy to get out of Edith with the emergency declaration in effect. I'll be fine. They should have been told to expect me. Huh? Okay, then. You're a pro courier, so I'm sure you know what you're doing. Safe travels. Same to you. If you need help with anything, just give me a call. And I'll be over before you know it. I look forward to your continued business. And you'll have it. Peace out. Thanks, Hermes. Van then made his way back to Edith, and upon reuniting with the others, he got back to work. You're right on time. I just came out onto the highway. Thanks to your help, I was able to get through the checkpoint without issue. There's a lot less traffic on the roads than usual, so I expect I'll reach you a little ahead of the schedule. Excellent. I will be waiting. I wasn't sure if you would be able to oblige our request, so I'm pleased you have been able to. I'm well aware you're against the clock. Saying no was never an option. Especially since I'm connected to this project too. I'll make sure these parts are delivered. I swear it on my name as a courier. I'm sure you will. I trust in your abilities. As long as the parts arrive safely, I have no specific instructions on, instructions on how you deliver them. I'm counting on you. Contact me again once you arrive. Understood. Professor Cronkite. Don't be a stranger now. Maybe if you're ever up for it, we can ride around somewhere. Well, we learned that Cronkite's up to something? We're not really anything about Hermes. But we learned there's a connection there. The mask is on forever. What's going on with these two? I do not know. Right, we've uh, that done then. And these people frozen in time. We've got uh, a couple of questions to ask ourselves. Like, who sees the movie? Uh, we'll get there when we get there. How? How can a whole village just vanish? So someone tell me it's all just some elaborate ad campaign for a movie. It has to be, right? Come on, somebody tell me it's all just a bad joke already. How can something so terrible happen in my own lifetime? It's a damn tragedy what happened in Cray. Entertainment companies used to go there all the time to film things. The industry's ties there run deep. That's probably why people within it are starting up charity efforts to help. Who knows if there are any survivors left or if the place can even be rebuilt. I'm sure that goodwill can still lead to something positive. Hmm. <sighs> well. Hmm. Well. Hello. Welcome. I know these aren't exactly happy times, but feel free to stay and relax. If nothing else, seeing our customers smile brings me a little comfort too, which I could definitely use right about now. Ah, uh, hmm, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to stay calm in this situation. When I first heard, none of it felt real, but then this morning it started hitting me and I started getting more and more scared. But we can't let them break our spirits. Those terrorists want us to be afraid. Remember that. What does Kagiyoshi have to say? Kagiyoshi doesn't like me. Looks like he's feeling tense too, not that I'm surprised. Yeah, just like the cats in our neck of the woods. They can definitely sense things. Mr. McMillan? Oh, oh Agnes, forgive me, I was simply closing my eyes for a moment. Were you thinking about what happened in Cray? Yes, I've had the pleasure of visiting there. To think such tragedy could befall such a warm and welcoming village. I have to carry on. Even under this declaration, I have no choice but to continue running the cafe. Still, I feel compelled to pray for those souls. You can tell he's trying his best to stay calm. Probably lots of people out there have had to hold on and keep themselves together how they can. These are not easy times, which is why it is all more important for us to continue to offer a space where people can relax and feel safe. I simply want to ease my customers' worries. I'll be continuing to pray for the souls of those we lost in Cray as well. May they rest in peace. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We await your next visit. How's this lady? Did you know? Not dealing with it well. How, how could anyone wipe out an entire village One off the face of the map? That's going story. way, way too far. Yeah. I like spine-tingling crime stories as much as the next girl, but this doesn't give me that sensation at all. 
It's hard to put into words. I guess I'm scared. Just scared. I wonder when things will go back to normal. <sighs> I can't believe our matter would go so far. I thought I understood what they were capable of, but I guess not. All I feel right now is scared. I'm just scared. It's when the true crime that you read gets really true, isn't it? Is Maniel here? Probably not. Well, I heard. There have been murmurs that what happened in Cray might have been an ethnic attack. It's only speculation for now. But I ended up telling my sister San about it anyway. I really shouldn't have done that though. She's probably freaking out. I get the feeling San is taking what I said really hard. I know she tries not to pay any mind to these sorts of issues. Part of my job is to ask questions and explore as many angles of a potential story as I can. But I think sharing that with her was the wrong call. I messed up big time. Um, Especially because it's theory and not facts. Right. Things have been pretty crazy around here lately. I've never seen anything like it. With the area surrounding Cray under lockdown, we can't send anybody out to do on the on the ground investigating. The editor-in-chief gave a pep talk earlier, so I'm sure our reporters have fired up to dig up something. I doubt it'll be easy, though. I've got a feeling this whole crisis could turn out to be a sink or swim moment for our paper. Right now, I'm in the midst of compiling the names of the people believed to have been caught up in the attack. One name that's come up is Dingo Brad, that reporter for Mel Magazine. I'm really worried about Marielle. I know how close the two of them were. Poor girl. Republic has never faced a crisis like this before in its long history. There's a lot of unrest among the citizens right now. And that goes for us too. We know all the questions that people want answered about this situation. We at the Tyrell Times have one job and one job only. To bring facts to the people before disinformation muddies the waters. What you're doing is vital to the well-being of this country. Be proud of what you do as you go out and get those answers. Yes, Chief. This is a completely unprecedented situation. It's really putting our abilities to the test. There's more to this story than what the government has led us to believe. The people are counting on us to shed light on the truth, so that's exactly what we'll do. There is a lot less people in the street, isn't there? Let's see what we've got. Yeah, nothing on the border. We'd have a marker in town. How about some nice cold ice cream? In tubs like these, a little sugar can help calm the nerves. Chocolate can also have a, a soothing effect. How oh, I bit my tongue. <laughs> so much for that sales pitch, I guess. Can't exactly sell anyone on it if I can't even keep my own head cool right now. Hello. Thanks for shopping. Well. Hey, did you see? How about some There's a new movie. There might be an emergency declaration going on, but if I don't go out and sell my popcorn, I don't have any money today. <laughs> Make any money today. I have no choice. I'm a total nobody. Worthless, good for nothing. The only reason I'm here is because I couldn't hack it when I tried to break into the movie industry and settled on this as a compromise. <sighs> hey there. What? See ya. Depression is bringing it out for a lot of people here. We haven't watched that movie, have we? In all my many years of living, I've never seen anything so horrifying before La Republic. It reminds me of when that cult we went on their rampage a decade ago. I must say I'm impressed just how much the young people are obeying the state of emergency and maintaining order. I always thought that generation was completely insensitive about such things. I suppose I have to start changing my tune. <sighs> you do, Toki. Mm. In light of what happened in Cray Village, the film industry will be doing charity Thank drives to offer visiting. support. For our part, we've decided to donate a portion of our proceeds to the Show cause. The there are also proposals to memorialize the history of the village on films that its legacy has never ticket, forgotten. Please proceed to the entrance. Cray Village serves as the backdrop for a famous romantic film produced during the early years of film. Not only did that movie spread awareness of the village, it also inspired many people to enter the industry outright. The the Suffice it to say, that village left an enormous mark on a number of people. Why it pays me to see what's become of it. Visit. I mean, no one's seen what's become of it at this point. A whole village disappeared. Uh, are you sure that's not the story of some movie? Thank you for your visit it really today. happened. And does that mean everyone who lived there... Uh, the I don't want to think about it. I'm begin. scared now. Hurry up and get out of the restroom, Mama. If you have a ticket, please proceed to the entrance. Cray Village was a common shooting location for films and now it's gone. 
You might not have all the facts, but one thing's for certain. It's absolutely despicable. At least its beauty has been preserved in film, but I know that can't replace what's been lost. Why not buy a souvenir to remember your I should mention that despite the state of emergency, we're continuing to show movies as usual. Some have argued that doing so is in poor taste, but we want to help keep people's spirits up in these difficult times. People are scared out of their minds right now. If they can come away from one of our movies with a better outlook, then we've today. done our job. Welcome, can I get you a ticket for something? Uh, what's playing right now? So if Peony Blade is leaving, perfect driver in Gloria Dawn of the Revolution. Uh, We've watched, uh, we haven't watched Perfect Driver and we haven't watched Gloria. But we have watched Peony Blade, we watched it as one of the, not earlier ones we watched, but we definitely watched it. Or have we? Oh yeah, we have. <laughs> so it's one of those other two then. I mean, I feel like Gloria Dawn the we Revolution is a bit more aspirant, but I feel like I should watch Perfect Driver 2. <laughs> I haven't watched that yet. Neither of them could be watched at night, right? Not that I remember. I feel like that one might be leaving sooner than Gloria Dawn of the Revolution anyway. How many tickets do you wish Thank to buy? You for your visit today. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, return to movie selection. <laughs> I need to figure out who to take. At this point, I don't think this will matter that much. It's kind of like min-maxing people around these bits. But Aaron will go to his next level if we do it. And, uh... Agnes is a bit off. Katra. I can't invite Elaine. I don't know, maybe Aaron and... We have a boy's day. <laughs> If you have a ticket, please proceed to the entrance. I'm Aaron and Katra. <laughs> Think it's for Perfect Driver 2? It'll be 600 mirror for free. We should we take Judith to see Nina and go, haha, <laughs> she won. <laughs> Why not buy a souvenir? Van decided to let everyone loose so he could watch a movie during his work break. After inviting some company to tag along with him, they made their way to the theater. Philip, a young fledgling Z1 race car driver, is the son of Louis Adler, the legendary racer. Tormented by the crushing weight of his father's legacy, Philip rebels against him, shattering the bond they held in the process. Shortly thereafter, Louis gets into an accident and perishes on the spot. With little time to process the untimely death of his father, Philip is thrust into the Grand Prix, his focus fractured and his will dwindling. But then, in the final lap of the race, when all hope of victory was nearly lost, the words of his father echo in Philip's mind. <laughs> you become a better pilot. The thing you gotta aim for ain't the finish line. You're gonna have to think way beyond that. If you wanna be a legend, set your sights on a goal to call your own, then speed past it. Unbelievable! Philip's taken the lead! He's past last year's champion, Max. Look at that little Lino of his go. Something's really lit a fire in him. Nothing's gonna stop him now. <laughs> that little punk didn't even spare me a second thought. Who on earth is that kid racing here? I found it, Dad. I found my goal beyond the finish line. I just wish I could have found it while you were still here. I'm going to leave you in the dust, Lewis Adler. I won't stop racing until I override every legendary record you ever set. Sons definitely tend to have a different kind of relationship with their dads compared to their mums. And they really shouldn't try to force themselves to be all buddy-buddy if it doesn't come to them naturally, if you ask me. <laughs> you know, speaking of dads, I don't know if I've ever heard much about yours. That's because I never knew the guy. Guillaume was much more of a grandfather to me. Just goes to show that you don't need a dad in your life to make life work, I guess. Uh, kind of a deep thought for you. I guess you do have a brain somewhere in the head of yours. Oh, shut up. I think I'm beginning to understand what you like about cars so much. 
I can see how someone might get so attached to their vehicle when it provides so much freedom. It's like a partner in a lifelong adventure. It must feel pretty fun and cool to be able to get to drive around like that, I must admit. Katra, have you... have you seen the light? Have you fallen in love with cars because of that movie? Finally, someone who gets me around here. I wasn't trying to convert you or anything, but man, am I glad I took you along now. Yes! Van, calm down. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I don't know that I'd say I've fallen in love with them, but it's making me think about getting my license. That's great. Really great. If you want someone to teach you the basics, I'd be more than happy to. I mean, sometime in the future. I don't mean right this minute, okay? Sorry, I don't mean to sound so flippant about it or anything. Thanks for inviting me, Van. I think I feel a little better after seeing that. Hey, looks like they're selling commemorative brochures for this movie. Maybe I should pick one up as a souvenir. Having finished their break, Van and his crew resume their work. Alright, Aaron made it to the next level. SELM chain effect plus 5%. Mm. And Cutter gained a little. Cast Albert Granger et al. with special appearance by Maxim Lugan. A human drama that explores the love and struggle between a young Z1 race and his famous father, Philip's rebelliousness causes a falling out between him and his father, a legendary racer of the past named Louis Albert Granger. Before they can patch things up, Louis tragically dies in a sudden accident. Philip, now wrestling with regret, speeds ever onward towards his next race. Human drama. <laughs> Unhuman drama? I guess that was Mishy. Hey, hey. Alright, well let's finish off the Tyrell district. Thanks for stopping by. What'll you have today? Nothing. Thanks for coming. You know, I haven't seen Kohan around here lately, and Miss Mal's been real busy with something too. What the heck is going on? Maybe it has something to do with what happened in Cray. Those two haven't been their usual selves, it's making me a little anxious. But there's still work to be done here, and it's not going to get done if I keep moping around. I better get to it. Um, this tastes great. Those people have gone too far. We are left with no choice but to crush them. How we'll accomplish that end is still up in the air, however. We'll have to follow the Elder's orders to the letter, regardless of what those orders may be. With a situation as grave as this, there are only so many ways we can respond. Depending on how things go, it's possible that there could be blood on the streets of Edith. I'll admit I do have my concerns about what the other families are up to right now, but in the end, we have to follow whatever orders the Elders give us. Just had that weird thought where... I'm thinking of playing Trails of Daybreak and going like, it's session 11. This game's been out for two months now. <laughs> and he's still plugging on. I don't believe what's happening. This feels way too serious to be real. They've got checkpoints all over the place. Everyone I passed on the way here looked like they were in complete disarray. Tell me about it. Much as I love me some juicy rumors, even I'm worried. I have to wonder how much weird base of stuff circulating right now. I'm gonna have to watch what I say from now on. Wow, this really is an emergency if even you're trying to get your act together. The situation is what it is, I suppose. I used to be interested in just about any rumors I came across, but I guess I need to start being more careful about false info flowing around. Maybe if I see anything weird on message boards online, I'll start to either point it out or, worst comes to worst, report it. I hate to do it, but... When the authorities first announced the whole state of emergency, at first it didn't really sit right with me why it was even happening. So I tried to go out for a ride on my bicycle to calm my nerves, only to get told off for doing that by a policeman. That's when I realized Calvert really is in trouble. This isn't some problem going on elsewhere I could just brush off like it's none of my business. 